Hello music fans, now that June is over, it's time to count down my top 10 metal, rock, and prog albums of June 2023, starting with my number 10, which is Scar Symmetry and The Singularity Phase 2 Xenotaph. This is melodic death metal with some progressive metal as well as some power metal influences. My favorite track on here is Scorch Quadrant. It's the seventh album by this Swedish band. If you're a fan of Soil Work, The Faceless, and Dream Theater, imagine a combination of those bands, uh, and that's kind of the sound of this. At its core, it's melodic death metal, but the song structures are very progressive. There are time signature changes and very technical playing from all members. The guitar playing here is particularly great. There's also really intense parts. There's powerful, harsh vocals, but a lot of really catchy hooks with clean singing. It jumps back and forth between hooks that could be on the radio and intense blasts of brutality. Number nine, I have Pupil Slicer with Blossom. And this is Mathcore. It's got some alternative indie post-rock influences as well as black metal and death metal influences in there. It's the second album by this band from the UK. Uh, my favorite track on here is the title track, Blossom. If you're a fan of Rolo Tomasi, I think you'll like this because it's another female-fronted mathcore metal band that combines this mathcore brutality and intensity with beauty, atmosphere, and catchiness. It's a nice mix of harsh vocals and clean singing. And number eight is the anchor it and it all began with loneliness this is progressive metal my favorite song here is forsaken and this is a debut album uh, i think it's a canadian band but i also think they might have some international members uh, i saw on one of their sites i don't know if it was twitter or facebook or something that uh, canada was listed as a location so that's great, I'm in Canada as well. Gotta give love to fellow Canadian prog metalers. Um, hopefully I'll see them live one day. Uh, great lead and rhythm guitar playing here. Great compositions, mostly clean vocals, but there is the odd harsh vocal. They have lots of jazz influences on here too, uh, as well as the metal. If you like Protest the Hero, Haken, Opeth, you'll probably like this. Uh, they kind of, sound like a mix of those bands but they don't uh, sound too much like them. They have the guitar wizardry of Protest the Hero, the compositional strength of Haken, and the dynamic range of Opeth and smash that together with some jazz fusion. Definitely one of the best debut albums of the year and it's been a strong year for debuts with albums from No Spoon, Okris, Tritop, Enoch Root, and Einar Solberg. Uh, expect to see this on the top 10 debut albums of the year at the end of the year. I'll make a video on that and I think this could, uh, we'll, we'll probably make it onto that. And uh, that's saying a lot because I do listen to a lot of music uh, already at uh, 214 albums listened to this year so far and it's only the halfway point. Uh, hopefully I don't listen to more than 400 albums this year, that's just too many. I need to start listening to less music because I can't even uh, remember it all at this point. Um, all right, and on to album number seven. My seventh favorite album of June 2023 is by Einar Solberg, and it is called 16. And this is progressive pop rock with some metal, some art rock, and symphonic influences. One of my favorite tracks on here is Home featuring Ben Levin, which surprisingly features rap, and I didn't dislike that, and usually I dislike rap. Uh, it's another debut album. Uh, Einer is the lead singer of Norwegian progressive rock metal band uh, Leprous, which I love that band. His voice is very unique. It's very high-pitched and a bit of an acquired taste, but once you acquire it, he truly is an amazing vocalist. My favorite tracks are Home, uh, Splitting the Soul, Grotto, and Over the Top. It's really hard to pick a favorite here. There's a lot of other great artists featured on this album, like Ben Levin from Bent Knee, Isan from Emperor, and many more. He's got uh, real string instruments on this album rather than the samples, which I enjoy. 
And a lot of his songs are slow burns that explode into powerful climaxes. Number six is East of the Wall and their album A Neutral Second. This is experimental progressive post metal. It's the sixth album by this American band. I heard the single Detonator Gauntlet. That sounded really interesting to me, so I added this to my list of albums to listen to. I highly recommend this for fans of The Ocean and Cult of Luna because it has that post metal vibe. But imagine if those bands did less screaming and more clean singing. There were also some cool moments with horns on this album and just a lot of great guitar parts. Number five, I've got Sigur Rós and Atta. This is ambient post-rock with classical influences, so definitely different from everything else on my list. It's the eighth album by this Icelandic band. It's very beautiful and peaceful sounding cinematic music with minimal percussion. It's very slow music. And it's kind of sad to the point where it can bring you to tears, but also hopeful and uplifting at the same time. The lyrics on here, as usual for Sigur Rós, are not sung in English. They're primarily in Icelandic, and also sometimes in a made-up language called Hopelandic or Vonlenska, uh, which is more non-linguistic vocalizations. They just sound good over the music. And this album sounds particularly good because it features a full orchestra. My favorite track is Blodberg, which means Blood Rock. Number four, I've got a debut album by a band called Okrust, spelled A-V-K-R-V-S-T. The V's sound like U's when pronouncing the band name. And their album is called The Approbation. This is progressive rock with metal influences. They're a Norwegian band, and the first single they released the Pale Moon sounds kind of like Opeth around Blackwater Park time, but a bigger focus on soft parts with clean vocals. There's growls right near the end of the song. Most of the album's like a mix of Porcupine Tree and Opeth. The last song on the album, though, is a long prog epic that has some parts that remind me of King Crimson. This is a really strong debut. It just cements this as a band that I will follow every release of going forward. Check out the track Arcane Clouds. My number, what am I at now? I think I'm at number three of June 2023 is OK Goodnight with The Fox and the Bird. This is progressive metal. It's the second album by this American band. Just amazing female vocals on here, with mostly clean singing, but some harsh vocals. Lots of beautiful, soft, folky passages, but also some heavy riffing metal sections. If you're a fan of Haken or The Deer Hunter, check this out. Number two is King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard and Petrodragonic Apocalypse, or Dawn of Eternal Night and Annihilation of Planet Earth and the Beginning of Merciless Damnation. One of the longest album titles I've heard in a while, maybe ever. Uh, didn't count how many characters that is, but it's quite a mouthful. Uh, so I'll probably just refer to it as Petrodragonic Apocalypse. Uh, they also have a long band name, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, so I often just refer to them as King Giz. Uh, this is the 24th album by King Giz. They're a great Australian band. They make albums in many different styles, uh, usually psychedelic rock, sometimes progressive rock. Uh, in one case, with Infest the Rast Nest, they made thrash metal. They've done jazz fusion. They've even gone as far as dream pop and hip hop. But this album is similar to their 2019 album, Infest the Rat's Nest, in that it has that thrash metal style. But this one's more progressive than Infest the Rat's Nest. I like it better than Infest the Rat's Nest. They basically went prog metal for the first time. They brought in some more like Tool vibes. I love all the time signature changes, and the odd time parts, the energy and the aggression in the guitar riffs, drumming and vocals is also just really fun. The guitar tones sound like Metallica, but the complexity of the song is quite beyond anything Metallica did. If you like Megadeth and Metallica, but you want to hear music like that with the crazy quirkiness of Mr. Bungle and the rhythm and atmosphere of Tool, this is an album you should check out. My favorite tracks on here are Dragon and Converge. And my favorite album of June 2023 also 
probably my favorite uh, fr front runner for my album of the year so far is Avenged Sevenfold with Life is But a Dream. And this is very avant-garde progressive metal with classical metalcore, industrial pop, electronic jazz, alternative and hard rock influences, a lot of genre bending on this album. It's very different uh, from typical Avenged Sevenfold releases. So if you're a longtime Avenged Sevenfold fan, I think every, everyone who listened to this was kind of shocked by what this sounded like. Because uh, it's very different. It's their eighth album. Their last album, The Stage, was previously their most progressive album, but this album makes that album seem safe, so they really became a lot more progressive. They've been constantly reinventing themselves since the beginning when they started as a metalcore band. They went more accessible in a traditional heavy metal direction with a few albums, but they still did a lot of cool experimentation and progressive stuff on those albums and genre bending. They included some orchestral songs, some that were more country sounding. I didn't like Hail to the King from 2013 because I think they stopped experimenting and tried to sound like Iron Maiden and Metallica and kind of more straightforward on that. Uh, but the stage, the album right before Life is But a Dream got them back on track and was more progressive. On Life is But a Dream, we have Nobody as the first single that was released from the album. It sounds like a continuation from the stage. The next single they released was We Love You, which was really weird all over the place. Uh, but yeah, very strange and interesting. Uh, they just have such mastery in their composition, performances, and production. My favorite track is G, which is a strange, progressive, and jazzy song that's wacky, like Frank Zappa and Mr. Bungle, and features time signature changes and some female vocals. Uh, this album is definitely going to be divisive. Many think it's amazing, the best thing they've ever done, but the fans of the straightforward stuff might be left confused and feel like this is weird. But if you like weird stuff like Mr. Bungle, check this out. Yeah, the one song on here uh, that I didn't like is Ordinary. Uh, it sounds a lot like Get Lucky by Daft Punk. Uh, I think they could have done without that. Um, but there's some other cool stuff on here, like Death sounds like a jazzy big band crooner song in the style of Frank Sinatra. And the closing track and title track is a solo classical piano piece played by Sinister Gates. Lyrics on this album, very philosophical, talk about things like life, death, and AI. The guitar solos on this album are also great. Very different sounding from each other, and I think that's great. Uh, as opposed to previous Avenged Sevenfold albums, all the guitar solos sound very similar to each other. They have like some shredding, some harmonies, and they all use this similar guitar tone. Uh, this time they use different tones, different effects, and play in different styles on each of the solos, which is really awesome. And that's it for my favorite 10 albums of June 2023. Hope there is something on this list that you enjoy. And uh, hit that subscribe button if you want to stay in the loop on when I release videos. I release them usually weekly, uh, counting down some of my uh, giving first impressions of some new albums that came out. And then monthly, I count down my top 10 albums of the month. And every now and then, I, um, I've been mostly focusing on like keeping up with new music, but every now and then I post something talking about old music, like... Uh, ranking classic bands discographies like I've done a Yes album ranking a Gentle Giant album ranking so classic prog or prog metal like Dream Theater and um, Opeth I've got rankings for those bands and I hope to put out some more of those in the future uh, let me know if I missed any albums from June down in the comments below and until next time peace out